So I actually lost the project files that I had built up over the previous videos in this series, and I had to start over from scratch and rebuild the project. So I'm just pointing that out to let you know that some things in the final version of the last video and the version that I'm using right now at the beginning of this one may be a little bit different. I'm going to try to mitigate that a little bit by stepping through the scripts very quickly. So pause the video if you have to, and just make sure that for the most part, you've got most of the code that you're seeing here. I may have added some things like type for the enemy. Oh, and I'll point that out too. I changed the name of the enemy scene and enemy script to straight shot enemy, just to add a little bit of variation if we do add enemies. And I've got that scene sitting in an enemies folder. So there's this type. I think you already had the bullet scene in the player. Everything else should be mostly the same. I added this little bit of logic just to say that if the if the enemy is off the screen, we're going to remove it. I could have used a, a visibility notifier like we did for the bullet, but I just did it like this uh, just to make it simple. And we're still spawning bullets that are shooting at the player, which we talked about in a previous video. Most everything is going to be the same. The player is still moving to the mouse position. The game isn't doing very much at all. The enemy spawn is still spawning a group of enemies right now. And the bullet is also mostly the same. We can we can pretty much ignore final speed. I think I set, I export bullet speed and we can change that in the editor. You may or may not have this code, but I'm essentially just checking for the collision with the player. And then if we find type player, so I have this type variable under player. If the bullet collides with the player, then we are going to, it's a little hacky, but we take the bullet and we spawn it, or we move it to position 2000, 2000, and then the visibility notifier gets called and the bullet gets deleted. Uh, I could just delete the bullet directly, but I was getting issues when I did that. So I just send it off screen and it gets deleted for me. So that those are the basic changes. Another method you can use to make sure that you have the same starting point as I do right now in this tutorial is go to the link in the description and find the GitHub project where I have uploaded the code. And I'll leave that code as it is at the beginning of this tutorial as a fresh starting point. So you can pull the scripts and the scenes from that and import them into your project. Okay, but moving forward, I hope to finish this game and this series within the next two videos. It's been a slow start up to this point. Uh, but I feel a lot more comfortable with it now, and let's just get moving. So the enemy spawn before was spawning everything in a group of 10. It would spawn 10 enemies, and then if we play the game, you know, they all come down from the top and they all start shooting. So a really quick way to make some improvements to that, we're going to come over to game. Our enemy spawn node here, if I just add a timer to that, add node timer, and then we go into node. For the timer, the signal for timeout, we're going to connect that to the enemy spawn. I usually just rename this to timeout. We're going to pull all of our bullet spawn code and put it into timeout. Bring that back on tab a little bit. And then instead of calling it 10 times, we're just going to call it on a timer. So timer.set wait time, let's say two seconds. Well, let's do one second and then timer.start. So now when the timer times out every second, it will spawn an enemy. So that's a really quick way to make a huge improvement to the game because now it actually feels like enemies are spawning with a little bit more polish than before. And you can see the effects of that bullet collision on the player with the teleportation now that the bullet doesn't travel through the player. It's almost like it gets absorbed as the player gets hit. Another thing I want to do very quickly, I have this VT323 font here in the resources. If you go over to Google Fonts, it's very easy to find anything that you want or any free font that you want. You can type something, ship, and you can see what the font will look like. I just grabbed this VT323. You can click on it and then you'll be able to download it. Just grab a TTF file and drag it into Godot to use it. Really quickly in the game scene, I'm going to add a label. And then within that label, in the inspector, I'm going to add some text, uh, your, let's just say your ship is at full health. So that's the text right now. Let me drag this up. I'm going to set it to align center, v align center, just to center the text. We can drag that out because I actually want it in the center. Well, we can just set this to the size of the game window. So 960, 640. 
And now the text is going to be in the very center. If I scroll all the way down under custom fonts, I can create a new dynamic font. Under font, hit load and find that TTF file that you pulled in. Load it up. And now under settings, we can increase the size of the font. We're probably going to go way up. Let's start at 32. Under custom colors, we just click the checkbox for black and it should show up. Now if we run the scene again, we'll have that just those that sentence there. I, I thought it might be cool to play around with the fact that there is no health bar, there is no real UI. We just add some text that changes whenever the ship gets hit. So under player, let me go back to my scenes, under player, under my player script, we can add in var health. We'll say var health equals uh, five. And then under enemy, our enemy script, which has been changed to straight shot enemy, we've got this collision. Well, it's under bullet, sorry. Under bullet, we know when we're colliding with the player. So if we take the collide object, we can call health minus equal to one. And now let's just make sure that that word will print collide health. Something like that. So now when I get hit, my health should print on the screen and it should go down. Yeah, so four, three. It's very hard to see, but down in the console, it's going down. For the label, we would also want to change the label. So I think what we can do is go to game. Let's, let's have a series of, let's say, health status. And we'll just set some strings in here. Your ship is at full health. And then we'll say your, actually, let's just do them backwards, just because, I don't know, it might make sense. Uh, your ship is lightly damaged. Your ship hull has been breached. All systems are failing. Your ship is falling apart and maybe one more uh, your ship it, well the crew has been lost let's say the crew has been lost something like that I, I'm just playing with the idea of maybe like a UI label health system I don't know so let's say under player our health is equal to five we have one two three four five six statuses so whenever we get hit by the bullet, let's say that we grab, whenever we get hit by the bullet, we want to call, let's, let's create a function in the player that says advance status, uh, something like that, advance status. We're not going to print that though, we're just going to call it. I think that should work. And then under player, we'll create that function. Function advance status. And what we want to do, so remember where the player is in the game scene logic. So we want to grab this label. So what we're going to do is go back into player, get parent, that's going to be the game scene, get node. We want the label dot text on the label, and we're going to set it to. So we've already changed the health, and we're going to set this equal to the game. What is, I forget what I named the health status. So under player, we're going to set it equal to health, status, health. So we're going to do that. Now let me just run it and see what happens. Your ship is at full health. If I get hit once, your ship is lightly damaged. Your ship hull has been breached. The crew has been lost. I got hit three times in a row. The problem is it's going to mess up really badly when it starts, yeah, when it gets below zero. So let's say, let's go back to the bullet and we'll say if collide.health is greater than zero. So now it can't fall below zero. So now we just have a cool representation of our ship's health, if you can call it a ship, and we kind of know where we're at. The last thing I want to do really quickly is get a player bullet firing out. 
I'm going to try to save some time by duplicating this bullet. I'm, going to, I'm just going to call it P underscore bullet. So now we have this bullet scene. It still has this as the name. We can rename this to player bullet. And then if I come under the sprite, we can change the visibility of this. Let's change the modulate to something like, I don't know, something blue. And then under back under our player scene, our player script, we want to make sure that we have that. Let's say P bullet equals load. We can drag that scene in here. Now we have the scene loaded, and whenever we want to shoot, we can we can spawn that bullet and get it to shoot wherever we want it. So I want to make sure that I have an input for the left mouse button. So I'm actually going to go, if you missed that, I'm going to project, project settings, input map. I just call it shoot as the action. Hit add down here in shoot. Uh, but basically what you would do is hit shoot, hit the plus button, mouse button, and then device zero left button is the left mouse button and add. And now we can call shoot as an input and check if the player is shooting. So if input dot is action just pressed shoot, then we want to spawn a bullet. So var b equals p bullet dot instance. We want I think that's all because we'll put the logic for the bullet in the bullet. Uh, so we'll just say add child b. And then when we come back under P bullet, we don't want the position to go down right now. We want it to actually go up. We want to get rid of this completely. Oh, okay. I, so I made a mistake too. I'm still using the same script. I accidentally edited the script of the bullet itself. So I don't want to do that. I'm using the same script as the bullet. So that was a mistake on my part. What we actually want to do is the Let's just copy all of this, and we're going to detach. Make sure you're in the P bullet scene, and I'm going to detach the script and create a new one. We're going to call it P bullet under scripts, and then I can copy all this stuff back in because it is mostly correct. We'll put that there. We'll take care of this again, and then for the direction. We want it like this. So we don't want to go in the x direction anymore. We want to go in the y direction. I am calling minus, so we'll just play with those negative values and see what happens. I want the bullet to go up out of the player, essentially. I don't want it to stay on the player. Okay, my bullet speed is set at 1 when I click on the P bullet, so let's set that to 400. Okay, so now the bullet's moving, but it's still connected to the player. So I think what we can do is the same thing that we do with the enemy. We can come back into the enemy logic and look at how the bullet is spawned. We're actually adding the bullet to our parent instead of the enemy itself. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing with the player. So instead of adding it to ourself, we're going to say get parent dot add child. Now if I run this, nothing happens. Ah, I still need to set the position equal to the player. So we'll say bullet dot position equals self dot position. Now if I run it, I can shoot bullets from the player. I can click a bunch and shoot at the enemies. Nothing's happened yet. I haven't set up the collision with the enemies, but we have a little bit of a health system. We have the player shooting. And I think in the next video we'll be able to completely finish this game up. And yeah, I appreciate you sticking with this series. I realize it's been all over the place. Uh, me losing the files caused a lot of problems. Uh, but I'm back with it now, and I don't think we have to make it too complicated. But thank you for watching. If you learned something new, remember to hit the like and subscribe button, and hopefully I'll see you in future videos.